Hey, what's up guys? For those who don't know me, my name is Matt and I'm making videos about architecture and design. And today I want to talk about how to get from this to that. This is the raw rendering and that is the product after it was done in Photoshop. So today I'm going to flip through the layers, show you how I do this, how you can do this, how we can all do this. And if we look at that image, there is a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I, I packed in everything that I had back then, every trick, every thing that I knew is in this image. So we have lens flares, we have kites, we have fog, we have, so, you know, whatever. Anyway, you might like it, you might not like it. However, it's gonna be interesting to see how this project is layered, how the image is layered, how, how we can come from a very boring rendering to a, you know, rather like, pretty happy image within a, I would say an hour. So the project itself was a semester task in Studio Zaha Hadid. It's a stadium for the Olympic games in Rio de Janeiro. And what makes this model really fascinating is that they have visualized some of the forces running through the surface of the geometry, adding amazing detail to the whole project. By the way, this is not the only image that I did. I also made an interior rendering, which you can see here. If you're interested in the process of that image, just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to make a tutorial about that as well. Anyway, let's get right into the file. Okay, let's get started. So this is what we have. It's the building, a few trees, some people, and some white ground. Well, that's not too much. So first thing we are going to do is we will add some background. So for this project, I went to Google Earth and checked out the location. I exported a high resolution screenshot and dropped it into my file, which looks like this, boom. Took care of the rule third, so two thirds building and one third background. You can see that I applied the principle horizontally, but also vertically, which leads our eyes nicely first to the roof, then to the space in front of the stadium, and then to the rest of the image. Then we need to fix up the background. I mean, it looks quite flat otherwise. There's not too much happening. So I simply copied some of the trees of my rendering, duplicated them multiple times, arranged them to the back, so you can see this is the image without the trees and this is the image with trees. So next step is to set up the lightning. Before I started the rendering, I already knew that I want to use a deep hanging afternoon sun, which gives us nice soft lightning of the building and also results in very interesting shadows. For example, with the trees, you can see we got some nice shadows with a 45 degree angle towards our camera, which gives us great detail and makes the model look very three-dimensional and real. So with this lighting scenario in mind, we can add the sky. This is just some image I got from the web. I added some color correction, made it a bit darker, desaturated it and took out some of the red tones. Then we can color correct the building and the environment, turn down the brightness, give it a little bit more red tones so it matches the background. The only thing that we are still missing for our exterior lighting is the actual sun. So what I did is I added a brush stroke in yellow on which I added another bigger brush stroke on top of it. Then I took some of those glare images, which I found online. You just go to Google, type in glare and you will find a bunch of them. Um, I dragged it into my file, set it on lighter color. And because that looks quite weird, we actually need to color correct it. So I pulled in this adjustment layer set the values to a more of a yellow. So I repeated the process once more with another glare image. And then finally added a lens flare on top of that, which you can do right away here in Photoshop. Just go up here, go to render, choose lens flare and you can place it onto your image. Because in my opinion, the lens flare is a bit too reddish. So I added another adjustment layer to it to make it more yellow. Okay, now let's lighten up the interior Pretty straightforward, I just added a layer, painted with a brush with a very low opacity and flow, about 15%, some strokes in yellow and orange. Duplicated this layer a few times, set them in different blending modes. That is way too orange, so I added a adjustment layer and that's it. So the next step is color grading. Color grading is important to set the mood for your image. We did some of it already before when we tuned down the lighting a bit and added the red tones to create an afternoon feeling but now we're going to push it a bit harder to get some color into the image. So the first thing is we are going to add some contrast by darkening the shadows. Maybe that's a bit too much. So I added a overall brightness to it. And what we are going to do is we add some punchy color scheme to the image. So I take the color balance component. So what we are going to do with the color balance, we're going to drag everything towards the blue. So it became way more interesting now. Uh, we are going to flatten out the roof a little bit. So take out the shadows. Then I add a little bit more contrast with levels. 
and I'm using another color balance to add some yellow in the background. So you can see now we have a very nice complementary color scheme here. In the front we have the blue, in the back we have the yellow and in between we have some nice reddish brownish uh, color tones which balance the whole image very nicely. And because I think the trees they jump out way too much, they have too many blue tones in them, I'm taking a selective color component, go to the green tones, take down cyan and yellow, push up magenta and this is it. So this is the image before the color correction and that's the image after color correction. So the next part is foreground. So you can see in the right lower corner, we have this huge white empty spot, which doesn't look too great. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover up that spot with some kites, so which I already cropped free. So I will turn on the layers now. So you can see I added them in different sizes and colors. But if you look at those kites, you can see that they are quite you know, intense, like their color is quite intense. They are taking away too much attention from the project. So what I did, I added a U and saturation adjustment layer to all the kites, which allowed me to change the color and make them fit better to the rest of the image. So, so if you look at the most frontal kite here, I changed the wing color, I changed the eye color and uh, brought down the brightness, which made it fit a little bit better. So that those kites are not just flying away, but actually connected to the ground. I added some fishing wire, so I, Went to brush, I, I set brush size to one pixel, hardness to 100%. I chose the color white and then I pressed P for pen tool. I drew out the wire on the screen and then right click and choose stroke path. Okay, so this is how it looks without the kites. This is how it looks with the kites. Without the kites, with the kites. So if we check the kites, you can see that they still look as they wouldn't belong to the image. So therefore we need to blend them in. And the way how we do that is to color dodge. So I created three layers, selected a few colors from my kites. I chose a dark pink, a light pink and a green. Painted some strokes in where the kites are located and set the layers to color dodge. Okay, so two more steps. So what happens in reality with objects that are further away is that the light gets scattered which results in objects that look farther away to have less contrast. So we are going to imitate that by simply creating another layer, taking the brush, paint some very transparent white areas just in front of the mountain. That looks pretty good. And in order to finish it up, we will do a last color correction which will pull the whole image together. So you can see that in the front of the building we have this royal blue which looks for my taste a bit intense. So we are going to choose a U and saturation component, select blues, drag the U a bit to the right and the brightness down which results in a nice navy blue colored shadow. Then we will pick some of the dark blue. I painted on top of the lower half of the image and set its mode to lighten. I did the same with the upper half and some red tones. You can see that the shadows in front became less harsh and adopted some of the blue color. If it's too strong, we can always play with the opacity. And that's it, done my friends. So if you have some questions, let me know down in the comment section. If you wanna show some love or some hate, also write down there, I will answer every single one of you. So see you next time here at my channel where we talk about architecture and design. Have a nice one, until then.